Well, here we are. We're in Seligman, Arizona. And this is a train that I ran on the depot the other night. It was the H Galbar 1-21A. And boy, uh, I learned a couple things running this train. Uh, what happened was is I got to Nelson and my train broke in two, and when I tried to put it back together, I came together too hard. I didn't mean to, but I came to, together too hard, and the first half of my train disappeared. So I was up a creek without a paddle, you might say. So, but one thing I realized is when you're checking your train for customer orders, making sure everything's there, one thing I learned was to t check the makeup of your train. Always a good idea. And I never really realized it. I just took the train and ran with it. And uh, first off, to let you know, my last locomotive, SP8147, uh, has its dynamic brakes cut out. So that reduces my braking ability somewhat so but as you see my train is first of all it's made up of loads keep going here red means that car is loaded and then we get to right about here and these cars are empty especially an empty bulkhead flat which I feel shouldn't be in this part of the train but this is how I accepted the train this is where it was I picked it up on actually on this track here in the yard in Seligman and I never thought to check my train. Well, I, I'll tell you, I, I'll know in the future now. And if I have to, I'll rearrange the train uh, so I got better train handling. So these cars are empty, and then we run into some more loaded cars. Loaded, loaded, loaded. And then some more empties. Empty, empty, empty. So this train uh, was a hard train to handle. It took some serious train handling skills and I didn't quite cut the mustard. I've ran this train since then. I created a section in my Run 8 single player called Training Academy so I can learn to take a train such as this and rerun it for the practice. Now see here's some more loads right here. Here's Here's some partials. Orange means partial. Here's some red, fully loaded. More empties. And some more loads. And then some empties. And then here's my, oh no, I'm sorry, that's further down. More loads. There's a partial right there. I actually had to double back when I left. I had to take half my train and back it into the other half of my train 
in the yard there in Seligman. Here's my DPUs. So this train was a challenge. And I only got as far as Nelson. And so we'll start these up. Now, before the BNSF installed the trucks and crossover, this train going west would have been on the other track. But because, apparently, through some of my research, the Gallup subdivision is right-hand running, or left-hand running, actually. Trains going east run on the left track. Trains going west run on the right track. Uh... The Truxton crossover apparently is to set up for that, and that was the only place they could find land to do it. So it would have been neat if they'd have put back the crossover there in Ash Fork, down there at the Ash Fork draw, but that would have been counterproductive. So, so now this train is on this track, I believe it's main track two, and. So we'll bring up the Wait a minute, let me I'm actually gonna just use auto. And we'll hop in the cab and we'll turn off our emergency brake and we'll switch on our lights and let's see. Okay, we'll ask Otto for a light and tone the dispatcher. So what I found helped the last time I ran this train last week uh, was to make my, there's my green light. I put up the fence. See, here's, here's my control panel right here for, this is my head end right here. And this is my DPUs right here. And what I like to do is I like to, See if everything's going to notch like it should. Okay. We're good with that. So, but these are my DPUs. And then this, these are called multi-function displays or MFDs. And this here on the left shows what's going on with my locomotives. So... There's, just like in real life, there's redundancy. In case one goes out, you still have another one. So, it's pretty important. Uh, but anyhow, these are my DPUs, and this is my head in right here. And so, uh, we got the green light. So, what I was going to say was the other night I, I found out that uh, making the rear end, the DPUs, work a little harder than the front end seemed to work f fairly well, but I still broke in two. So I'm still experimenting with this train to see what, what works for it. So we'll go ahead and we'll put the fence up. That green line signifies the fence being up and what that means is that the DPUs will work independent from the head in. So that enables me to work the DPUs independent of the front end. And so I'll show you what I mean. I'll put it in forward 
and then toot the horn and then I'll give a couple of jolts on the throttle for the DPUs and they'll start shoving and let's see and then okay okay my rear end is moving because my EOT just came on so So here we go. <clears throat> so my rear end is shoving. It's in notch two. And my head end is only in notch one. So if I try to give. If I. My objective the other night running this. Was to keep the train bunched up. That seems to give the best result. And I think that's what they try to do in real life. Most of the time. Not all the time. But so I'll go to notch two on my DPUs, let it settle down a little bit, see my amps are still, okay there we go, okay. But like I say, I'm trying to keep my train bunched up. How successful I'm going to be doing that, I have no idea. I'll probably break in two again. Uh, what I can do is bring up this here. And this shows me there's two lines here. The top line is the coupler force. And then the bottom line is the actual train. <clears throat> And the coupler force is looking pretty good now. This is a little yellow. See these dots right here are my lead locomotives. And then my two dots here in the back, those are my two DPU locomotives. And I'm green on the end and a little yellow on the front. So I think that's okay. So I'll go up another notch again. Let it even out. Let it settle down. I'm in notch four now on the DPUs. Now I'll go up to notch three on the head end and I'll let it even out. I'll let it uh, even out, settle down, let it settle down. And as you can see, My rear end is pushing harder than my front end. So probably by about a hundred amps. So So anything goes here. Uh, I can have derailments, I can have breaking twos. So we'll just be prepared for whatever. The Version three of Run Eight. Now you can have you can have derailments. You can have string line uh, derailments. You can have uh, hot boxes. Uh, you name it. So breaking twos. You can you always were able to have breaking twos. So. Turn off my bell. So now you notice the top line is a light green. So and that signifies we're doing pretty good. A little yellow here right behind the locomotives. So I'll tap it up again on the notch it up a little bit on the throttle for the DPUs <sighs> now 
Now having no experience whatsoever doing this in real life, I don't know how far they go out with the DPUs versus they had in. In other words, I'm in notch five now on my DPUs and in notch three for the head in. So, but I'm looking pretty good. I'm There's some yellow here, but that's about it. So, when notch five on the rear end and notch three on the front end. So, We'll just let her go and see how that goes. Uh, this part's not too bad. Uh, once you get outside of Seligman, well, there's my alerter. Um, that's another thing in version three. The alerter comes activated in version three, whereas version two it didn't. You had to go out of your way to activate it. <clears throat> but really, uh, this isn't too bad now. You get outside of Seligman, west of Seligman, where the tracks separate, and then the tracks will dip down into a valley. I think it's the Pina Valley, I think. P-I-N-A. And that can be a little tricky, trying to maintain your speed. But we're down to 24 miles an hour now, so we'll notch it up on the head end to notch four. Let it settle down. Okay, and you'll see I'll go another notch on my DPU. See, it just went F dash N6, and this will go to N6 as well. There we go, it just went to N6. Now, this train is a crawler, it's, a, it's not a shooter, it's a crawler. So the grade going out of the Pina Valley, I think that's the Pina Valley, uh, I'm doing maybe about 13 miles an hour. So now you notice in the back of the train, it's a pretty good green, which means all is well. But here in the front, behind, right behind my locomotives, it's kind of a distinct yellow. Now that'll turn orange and then red if things get really bad. So I'm not really worried about this now. I'm not really. Let's see, we're uh Yeah, you've got a green light. Let's see where we're at. Four thirty two point three. They like for you to know where you're at at all times on the depot. So it's a good habit to get into to know what milepost you're at in case a dispatcher has to drop a signal in front of you. dropping speed and I don't know why. Here we go, we're going back up again. Let it settle down a little bit. up 
one more will not will max out on the DPUs. See how well that does. but oh well. <clears throat> I think the speed limit here is 55. Yeah, 55. I like to keep an eye on this because this is a good indicator as to what's going on in my train especially with this Frankenstein train. It's made up of all kinds of stuff. Loads, empties, partials, empty bulkhead flats. I mean, it's just a makeshift train. But like I said earlier, the thing I learned was to not only take note of your customer orders, but also make sure of your train makeup so if you can't redo the train you can at least know what you're getting yourself into so duly uh, uh, duly noted <laughs> Or 31 mile an hour now. We're picking up speed. And just around this curve is where the decline begins. So we're allowed 55. So probably about 40 mile an hour I'm going to start coming off the throttle. And if you have experience with the real thing, if you're a locomotive engineer and uh, you would like to add your experience to this video, please leave a comment in the bottom. I am very open to learning how to do this. So please let me know what you know if you're if you're okay with that okay I'm gonna start coming off the cuz I'm gonna clear Yeah, I'm just going to give it a little bit of air. Okay, see the bottom line is the air going through the train. So... I'm going to try something here. I'm at 82 pounds. Uh oh.
Okay, I'm at 42 mile an hour. So I'm going to come off my air. Probably shouldn't do that, but because it takes a while for it to build back up. In the rear, I've got 90 PSI. I've got a flow of 60. So and I understand once you get at 60, you can do another application. So Oh, that actually worked out better than I thought it would. Now that red dot on the bottom of the on the bottom line I think indicates a car. Oh boy, here. Here. Just let it settle down. coming down now. <coughs> so we've dropped down into what I believe is the Pina Valley. I'm down to 45 mile an hour. So when I'm in run three on the head end and notch five on the front, I'm just going to leave it there for a little bit to see how it does. So, okay, I'm going to, I'm still dropping speed, so I'm going to notch up on the front end to notch four. And then notch up on the rear end to notch six. And we'll just keep it at that and see what it does. I'm not so much concerned about my speed. I, I feel as, as long as I keep it up between 45, 50 miles an hour, I'm good. My main concern is trying to keep from breaking in two. So... Now this part isn't so bad because it's pretty much straight tangent. It's, it's straight. But those mountains in the distance, uh, when we get to those, these tracks twist and they turn and that's where the trouble begins. So getting up the grade isn't too bad, but I'm going to go one more notch here on the front end. So I'm a notch four in the front, or notch seven actually. Oops. Okay, I go to notch five in the front. Clear.
Okay, I want to notch eight on my rear end. And I'm going to notch five on my head end. So this is purely an experiment. Okay, I'll go to notch six on the front end. So I'm a notch eight on the rear on my DPUs and uh, notch six on the head end. little yellow there on the top line behind the locomotives, the head end locomotives. Not too worried about that now, but 441, milepost 441. Clear. So far, our top line is looking pretty good. Still have this one car right here showing red. I'm not sure if that means it's not passing the air. I'll have to read up on that to see exactly. They've changed these two lines. They used to be uh, dotted lines. And each dot or each dash, they were dash lines, each dash represented a car. So it used to say EE -E, or however many locomotives were on the front, in the middle, or on the end. And then a dash line for each car in the train. It made it real easy to see where you had a hot box or whatever. Now... Now this just gets in the ballpark, which I guess in real life, that's what they do. They don't know exactly what car it is in real life. They just got to get out and walk the train in rain, sleet, snow, wind, freezing cold, blazing hot, doesn't matter. So we're at 46. We're doing fairly well.
Now you see my green on the top line is almost all the way across, almost. So I'm okay with that. I'm happy with that. Green means good. That means my DPUs are shoving on the tail end, keeping the train bunched up, so... Now we may or may not have some traffic with this. Uh, I've got trains set up, so we may, the probability of having a meet is pretty good, and then again it might not happen at all, I don't know, but, see now my line, my green has gone, has dissipated, and I've got more yellow now than I had green. It's when that upper line starts turning orange and then red when you gotta start crossing your fingers. Uh, like I said, clear? Like I said, this train is a, a Frankenstein. I got loads and empties and partials scattered throughout the entire train. So. And here's where our grade starts here coming up. And it's going to be low and slow going up, getting up that grade. We'll probably only be doing about 12 to 13 miles an hour, but that's okay. As long as we don't have any braking twos. So we're down to 44 mile an hour, almost 45 mile an hour. We're pulling 537 amps on the on the rear end and 422 on the head. I'm trying to keep my train bunched up. So Now we're going down a grade. You kind of want to watch your use of your air, too. I mean, don't just give it a full 10 pounds like I just did. You want to incrementalize and see what it does. And incrementalize, see what it does. At least that that's what I have done. What I have found works. Clear. Now see our line is getting pretty yellow right there. So we may have some issues. Now it's turning turning white now. When I was running this in the depot, I did break in two right along here. So So I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm going to see what what, what we've do what we, what it does here.
notch six on the head end, notch eight on the rear. <laughs> and my rear end is shoving like crazy, which is just what I want. And this is where the grade starts right here. So we're going to be dipping down some low and slow, but again, that's okay. Here's our train right here. There's our train. So, DPUs are a long ways back there. We are at 12,000 tons, 9,710 9, feet. So, So we're on notch seven on the head end now. Let's see what that does. come off of it a little bit here yeah Let's pull a little too hard on the head end so we'll just be crawling up this gray but I think we'll make it I was getting a little too yellowy right behind the locomotive so I'm back to notch six on the front end and notch eight on the on the rear on the tail end of my train so I've got uh, 1.4% we're going up a 1.4% grade I'm at 2.1 horsepower per ton which you're allowed 1.7 on the Seligman sub I'm at 12,940 tons, almost 13,000 tons. 83 loads, 74 empties, 664 axles, and I'm at 9,710 feet. So, and I've got 48 dynamic brake axles, so. Down to 16. There's my DPUs way out there. Uh oh, we're running a little reddish. see what happens
clear. We are at mile post 449.3. Doing 15.8 mile an hour. Now I could be wrong, but I don't think engineers in real life have this bar that helps them determine what their coupler force is looking like in any particular time. They pretty much have to go I think by the seat of the pants feeling and experience and that includes knowing your your district or your terrain and And as most of you know, north of here, past those mountains is the Grand Canyon. So, so long, Seligman. Doing better than I thought we would we would do her sixteen point four miles per hour. Four fifty. I'll post four five zero point zero. This is going through a greaser. That's what you saw there that we just passed. Now we don't have any set outs or pickups to make. We're just making a straight shot for Barstow. But Barstow is a long ways from here. <laughs> so we got a grade coming up into Needles and then going out of Needles up to Goffs. And then down into Katie's is a downhill. And then from Katie's on up to Ash Hill is, and then Ash Hill is going to be a challenge. So going up out of Needles. And then coming up out of Katie's is going to be a bit of a challenge. I don't know if we're going to get that far along tonight, but we'll see what happens. Now, I really want to keep an eye on my graph. The top bar especially. I keep an eye on my coupler force. My coupler forces.
Now, if it takes an actual 12 hours to get from Seligman to Needles, that's that's what it takes in the game as well, in, in, in this simulation. And if it takes 12 hours to get from Needles to Barstow, in real life, that's what it takes in the simulation. So... Now you see that DPU error? What happens in the simulation as well as real life is if the DPUs have an error, they'll stay on their, la their, their most recent notch. And for about, I think it's, I'm not sure, I think it's two minutes or 30 seconds or something. Now this is a first for me. I've noticed that my bottom line is is yellow. I'm going to have to read up on what all that means. I think it's a little different from what it used to be. I'm not sure, but it doesn't hurt to read up on it. So again, this is just how I do it. It doesn't mean it's the right way or the professional way. I'm trying to do it how I think they do it in real life. And if it means getting on the forums and asking questions, that's what it means. So... Forty-five mile an hour speed limit. We're only doing fifteen point six miles per hour, so <clears throat> now on the other side of this is a hill. We'll be topping off and then going down a hill. So it's kind of a hog back from Seligman to well Seligman to Valentine anyhow it's kind of a up and down curve right curve left S curves so it can be a bit of a challenge <laughs> Clear. And our mile post is four fifty one point three. See, we're picking up speed now, so we're starting to top our grade. We're starting to rotate a little bit here.
comes a detector. Now the alerter, as you are well aware, will only activate if nothing's been touched or activated within a certain amount of time. So I was blowing the horn and, and ringing the bell, so that's an input, so that cancels out the alerter. But if you're not doing anything for a, for amount of whatever amount of time it is, and I've noticed it, the alerter activates more often the faster you go then if you're not doing anything, it'll activate. If you are, if you're doing an, uh, an application, uh, doing the horn, whatever, then it's a little different. It won't, it won't the, the, uh, the alerter won't activate, so. out let it let it settle a little bit through here is 45 so Four fifty four, mile post four five four. Okay, I'm going down on my speed. I believe it's still forty five, yeah. hot box so Now 
Now we're on a downhill, so it's going to be a little easier, I think, taking off. Mile post four five five. One thing I've learned is that you do everything incrementally and you have to plan accordingly. In other words, what I mean by that is you don't just slam on the brakes or pedal to the metal. You try to do it incrementally and then see what happens and then do it again and see what happens. And see what's going on here I think I know yep this is what happens when you get a hot box so on these here the see this the train symbol and this here as well the H Galbar is on net is pink or magneta and off to the side of the train so when our train cools off let me get away from the main line here in fact know what our rear end looks like. Our rear end's okay. No, I'm sorry. I'm a rear ends. <laughs> so the way you remedy this is you just wait. You just it'll eventually cool off. So it just gives you a chance to go to the bathroom and you want to call the dispatcher and let them know you're at mile post 455.0 and you're the West H Galbar BNSF 7335. So we'll just sit and wait. I'm not sure. I'll top up in the cab. <laughs> uh. Request mainline authority because. Oh, okay. Oh, no worries. And once these cool off, then these H gal bars, these will go back to being red and above the locomotives. So, see how, or they'll be green actually. I'm sorry, green. See, they're slowly coming back. We'll check our head, our rear end too. These locomotives are earning their keep. This could happen again, it may not.
Okay, we're okay on the head end. We just gotta wait for our rear end to So these, oh, there we go, they're clearing. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So. Okay, here we go, our fence is up still. So we'll two wait for our EOT. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> I'm not sure what our signals are going to be. Because the dispatcher said he's got the switches thrown. So he couldn't give us mainline authority. So. Clear. Okay. Okay, we'll go one notch up on the DPUs just to try to keep our train bunched. I don't know, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Just let it settle down here. Mile pull 456.3.
just let it settle down let that yellow have a chance to go away Okay, here's the Nelson Tunnel. See what that does. Speed's coming down, so that's good. Four fifty nine point three, and there's our train right there. Uh, I'm going to have to stop again because my train is getting hot.
this gives you a pretty good indication of what it is they've got to do in real life. back to normal now. So I'm just coming into the dynamic brakes real slow and easy. Gonna show okay now, but I'm just gonna. I broken two here just around this curve here, the other night. Yeah, I broken two just around the curve the other night with this train. I don't know what my rear end looks like. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. It for a couple minutes and make sure it's, let things settle down a little bit here.
These things are beasts, but even they get tired. Okay, what I think I'll do, or I'll try, anyhow. Going to run two on my DPUs. Come off the independent, wait for the EOT to come up. There we go. Let him just start pushing me. Okay, and then I'll go into dynamics. <clears throat> On my head in. And hopefully that'll help keep the train bunched going down this grade. I'm beginning, I'm beginning to understand now why you want to keep your train bunched up as much as you can, as often as you can. Because otherwise you stretch those couplers and you get a break in two and... Okay. Go up to two, and we'll see how that does. I believe the speed limit is still forty five, yeah. to three in my dynamics. Now I've only got three locomotives that I have dynamics. My fourth locomotive in the heading consist. The dynamics are cut out, so... Clear. Got a nice green line on the top line, so four sixty-three point
right here or I have broken two. But so far I'm looking okay, I think. And then bam. Well, as long as I think it's it's white or green, you're okay, or even yellow. See, now we're going through this S curve, and that's. Greasers we're going over now, flange greasers. back and forth. Seems to be coming down. Now we're going back up. slight reduction, a six pound reduction.
Clear. Seventy. Four seventy point three. Clear. I think so. Clear.
Cherokee. Sixty. Not doing that anyhow. Yeah, and see what it does. Truxton crossovers. Sixty. Okay, now we got one. <clears throat> Twenty-five.
Truxton. Yep. Clear. Four seventy nine.
time I had blood coming out of my dink, I told mom. And no, I think she just said take, you know, keep an eye on it. And she read up on it, and she said it's normal for a young man. <laughs> mm -hmm. Fifty five. Forty one point one. <laughs>
Okay. I think we're doing pretty good here so far. I notice the line, the upper line behind the locomotives is blue and the rest is green and then it goes to white and then a little bit of yellow right in front of the DPUs. But I'd say that's okay. I'm not sure what the blue means. Uh, maybe unless it's maybe too much stress up against the lead units but again I'll have to read up on that. Sorry for not saying anything for quite a while. I was really concentrating on getting us through Crozier Canyon. That was Crozier Canyon that we just came through. That's a world-renowned rail fan photography spot. Got to be careful though because I understand it's full of rattlesnakes. So you got to really be careful when you go up in there. But there's been many a good photograph taken in Crozier Canyon. coming out of the canyon then. So what I'm learning from this is that you really have to manage your train and pay attention. Uh, you have to manage your air brakes, your dynamic brakes, your throttle, be aware of your speed, what your seat of your pants feeling is telling you. not able to just kick back and relax. You, you've got to earn your money, earn your keep. Once we come out of this canyon, it's going to be a fairly straight shot.
we can do 55 now. Really, I don't think we need that. This is a control point. Control points don't have mile post markers, only intermediate signals. And this is a control point, so that's why there's no uh, mile post mile marker on it. It'll have a name, but that's it. We are allowed a maximum of uh, speed. This train is allowed a maximum speed of 55 miles an hour. Manifest, usually that's what it is, is 55. In a model will be 70, passenger 70. But like a unit train or manifest, usually 55.
Actually, I think I was still 55. Okay. Hackberry. I would have loved to have been in, been alive back in the forties and fifties and been able to stand along this main line right along here back then. You can only imagine the things you would have seen. Passenger, 90 miles an hour. And boy, let me tell you, they move through here.
Well, we're out of Crozier Canyon, and we're approaching Kingman, Arizona now, but there is a an uphill grade coming out of the canyon moving towards Kingman. It'll taper off, and then we'll start going down. But right now, we're only doing about 34 miles an hour. Again, I'm just keeping an eye on my bar graph here, especially the top one. The top one tells me what's going on with my coupler forces. I think we may be topping off here now. Uh, speed limit is still 55. Basically, we're still coming out of the canyon. Really? Yeah. Okay, we're picking up speed now. This is a huge curve that comes around going into Crozier Canyon or coming out approaching Hackberry I mean that is Hackberry that we went by a while ago clear signal Just settle out here.
good effect there. Leaning into that curve, the locomotives were rocking and rolling. Now what I'll do is, I'm right now I'm in dynamics, and I'm just going to keep going until I see a, a change in the speed. See right there, so f B4 is pretty good. And it jumps up, so let's go up to five. five 497.1 mile post. Squirt of air here. A six pound reduction. Now we're coming down. Settle down a little bit here. Getting close to my bedtime, so I'm going to have to call it here. But I'd say we did pretty good. No breaking twos. Just some hot boxes, but I can deal with that. Just a matter of stopping and letting things cool off. But I'd say we did pretty good. It shows me that I've learned from our last from my last two runs with this train.
not sure if I got anything behind me. Oh yeah, I do. Okay. Okay, that does it for now. I hope this helps somebody. Okay, thanks for watching.